Hey there, this is John Henney. I'm a voice teacher and the author of the Amazon best-selling book, Beginning Singing. You can get a free PDF download of the book at the link below. Okay, today I'm going to be taking Steve Perry's isolated vocal from the studio version of Don't Stop Believing. Uh, pretty sure this was recorded back in 1981, over 40 years ago. And this vocal has held up as one of the great pop rock vocals of all time. It's become one of the classic pop rock songs of all time. And listening to his vocal isolated, as well as running it through some analysis software, gives us insight into Steve's vocal genius. So let's start off by just listening to a bit of the track. Okay, I've loaded his vocal into Voce Vista, which is a high-level research piece of software for voice researchers and voice teachers. And you're going to see some weird-looking squiggles and jumping around. I'll explain what that means in a minute, and I'll use it to give some insight into Steve's voice. So let's listen. Just a small town girl Living in a lonely world She took the midnight train Going anywhere Now, right off the bat, you can hear how relaxed the vocal is. It's funny, when it's isolated, you hear that Steve isn't really belting for the bleachers. As someone said recently, he's channeling Sam Cooke more than he's channeling some big giant voice. And Steve, I remember reading in an interview, he talked about finding ways to make things easier when he sang. And this vocal shows it. When it's in the context of the song, I think it all comes together and it sounds like he's really laying into his voice. At least that's how I remember it. But when we isolate it, it's just so very smooth and relaxed. Let's hear that again. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Just beautiful. Now, I'm going to show you something about the vocal here that's true of all human voices. And this is what makes a vocal innately human and natural and real. So within all these squiggles, what this is, is this is a snapshot of all of the energy in Steve's voice. When we sing, we're actually singing a lot of pitches at the same time, these micro pitches called harmonics. And the ear blends them into one pitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the actual pitch that he is singing. So I'm going to remove all the, the spectrogram. And we're just going to have the fundamental pitch. Let me simplify that. Okay. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Here we go. Now, looking at these lines, they're not straight. Looks like somebody's kind of sketched. They're jumping up, they're moving down, they're bouncing around. This is because it's a human being singing. It's not going to be a straight line, right? Steve didn't use auto tune. The first note you'll notice has this big leap up to the pitch. And rather than just hitting the note, just, he, just, he slides up to it. Listen, it's quick and it's subtle, but it's there. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. He does it there. He jumps up again. She took the midnight train going anywhere. 
Look at that. Look at on the word train. Let's go back a little bit. See that? There's a slide. Train going. Train. That's because the voice doesn't have frets. It doesn't have keys. Your vocal cords are like a rubber band and they have to stretch to pitch. So there are micro slides going on in a vocal all the time, unless we artificially remove them. And then we get that auto-tune share effect, like on Believe. That was the first time that auto-tune was really pushed and made obvious. And the natural voice doesn't do that. Now let's look at the last note he sings in this line. Anywhere. You can see that the pitch moves. It's not perfect. That's because when we are singing notes, the human body can't keep it exactly the same the whole way. There are little tremors in the body. Each little burst of the vocal cords can be a little different. There is a waver in pitch. Now, it's a micro waver. We don't really hear it, but you can see it. And that's why when people like Phil of the Wings of Pegasus channel, when he's looking to see if people are lip syncing, what he does is he pulls up the pitch, just like I have here. And if it lines up exactly to a previous recording, he knows that the person is lip syncing because you can't sing everything the same way twice. And you can't sing everything absolutely perfect. And that's also how he can tell if auto-tune or pitch correction is being used because it becomes too perfect. Steve's vocal is perfect, but it's perfectly human. As we go, slide. Yes, the city boy. See, it's not the exact same pitch. You see how the, the peaks aren't hitting the exact same way each time. He's a fantastic singer. Again, if it was hitting exactly with no variation, that would tell you that there is pitch correction or auto-tune. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put back in the spectrogram. And now we're going to see all of this in his voice. Let me, let me pull this down so we can see more of it. And this, for me, is where things get really interesting because this is showing us where the acoustic energy is in Steve's voice. So let's take it back again and just follow along. Just look at it. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Now, these bouncing lines over here, this is what it's doing in the moment. This is the long-range view. So you can look at his vocal and see where the energy is. And this is where, over here, this is where the energy is in this exact moment. And you see these lines bouncing around. And these lines are showing you where Steve is putting the acoustic energy. And this shows us his acoustic strategies. Because even though I said Steve is not singing with a lot of energy and effort, it still sounds robust and full, and it cuts through the mix because of the way he uses his resonance. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Beautiful. Just a city boy, born and raised in South Detroit. He took the midnight train going anywhere. 
Now, I'm going to take a filter. And what this filter is going to do is this filter is going to remove all the other harmonics and only play what I choose. And so I'm going to play you the note that he's singing. This is called the first harmonic. Listen to this. Sounds like an ooh, yeah? Now, if I remove this harmonic, watch what happens. His voice sounds kind of thin. Let me put it back. Hear how it warms it up? You can almost hear that ooh sound come back in. So, this is the first harmonic. Let me put it back in. But over here, this is showing you how loud each harmonic is. And you'll notice that the pitch that Steve's singing, this first harmonic, is not where the bulk of the energy is. It's here in this second harmonic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate this and let you hear just the second harmonic. Hear that? That's the loudest part of his voice. So now, listen to his voice without it. Changes the vowel. Singing weird. So this is what singers do. When you sing a note, when you're speaking, you're creating many, many harmonics. All of these pitches are going on at the same time. You don't hear them separately unless I do a filter. We're all hearing them. The ear blends them together. But depending on how much energy we give to a harmonic, we're going to get different vowels, and we're also going to get different vocal color and intensity. And so with Steve's voice, what he's doing is he's putting more of the energy in these upper harmonics. Let's go back a little further. Just a city boy, born and raised in South Detroit. So right there, South. Let's look at the word south. Oh my goodness. Look where the energy is. It's all the way up here. That's where the bulk of the energy is. And the two greatest peaks in the energy are here and here on the second and third harmonic. Now, depending on how we boost these harmonics, we get different vowels. So what I'm going to do, I've got a little uh, vowel creator over here. And I'm going to, you see as I move it around, it moves the, where the energy is located. And I'm going to line it up with Steve. He's got ah. And I'm going to see, let me isolate just this little bit. And we'll loop it. I, I know that's annoying, but listen. Listen to the vowel there. So the word is South, but he's singing Sa, South Detroit. Why is he opening that vowel to an A? Ah? Because he wants to put the energy up here so that it really cuts Listen to it in context. When he hits that note, he doesn't have to push. The note has a lot of energy because of the way he shaped the vowel. Now, if I go back here and I'm going to train, let's get this filter right 
on it. And on. I'm going to highlight this again. Just sounds like a whistle, yeah? Listen when I bring in the rest. Now, doesn't still sound like Steve yet, does it? Because we need all this. Now it sounds like Steve. But the bulk of the energy is here. Let me isolate this again. And we'll do it to remove the harmonic. Listen. Doesn't sound anything like them. There it is. So if I cut out where he's putting his acoustic energy, listen to it. Raise himself to trust. Doesn't even sound like the word. He took the midnight train going in. Let me take it back. Then raise himself to trust. See that? Let's put it back in. On and raise himself to trust. So just that one little harmonic makes a huge difference in Steve's voice. But that difference is amazing because that's where he's focusing the energy. That's how his voice is able to cut. Let's now listen to second verse. A singer in a smoky room, the smell of wine and cheap perfume. For a smile they can share the night, it goes on and on. Now, the word is on, right? Where's the energy? One, two, the third harmonic. And that third harmonic, if we're going to get voice teacher geeky, we associate that more with singing in a mix as opposed to more of a, of a belt. And it's a, it's a richer, more balanced sound. It goes on and on and on and on. Perfect. Up and down the boulevard, there's shadows searching in the night. She likes people living just to find him. Right here, the word find. There he goes, he's got that. Look, it's the same vowel. And emotion hiding somewhere in the night. Now, Steve's done something different here. I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see it. Now the energy is on the second harmonic. And this is more of a belt. And you notice it's more of a straight tone and it's more of, it's, it's, it's a different sound, right? It's I'm not going to use the word harsher, but there's a little more urgency in it. So the energy is on this second harmonic. Let's, let's take it out. Take it back a little. Different vowel. Now it's the na, right? Now let's put it back in. I'm going to isolate this.
Now listen. That's the harmonic. Focus on that sound. You can hear it in his voice. Listen. That that ringy ping, right? Because the note he's singing is this B, but what you're hearing loudest is an octave higher. That's why his voice rings. That's why his voice has energy. And especially there, that tone is, is more biting and it really, really drives. So he's utilizing really good vocal acoustics and really good balance. All right, let's continue to listen to him. Working hard to get my feel. See? Ha, ah, ah. Now he's back on this third harmonic. Hard to get my feel. Everybody wants a thrill. Beautiful mix there. Look at that. Look how strong that third harmonic is. It's just so good. Everybody wants a thrill. Paying anything to roll the dice. Just one more time. Beautiful vibrato. But look, I'm going to show you something about vibrato. Okay, let me go here. So over here, I'm gonna give an average. So his average vibrato right there is 5.8 Hertz. That's right where you wanna be. You wanna be between eh, four on the slow side to seven, eight on the faster side. Freddie Mercury was more towards seven. Um, he's right here at 5.8 and he's moving up and down basically a quarter tone, a half of a half step. Um, he's moving above and below the pitch. Now, let me do this. But when we look at the vibrato, look right here. Watch that vibrato rate. It's at six hertz. Then it drops to 5.7, 5.6, jumps to 5.9. The vibrato extent is right now at 63 cents. So the pitch is swinging a little bit more. Now it's at 68 cents. Now it's at 70. Then it dropped to 49, jumped to 61. So what am I saying here? That listen how steady his vibrato sounds. <laughs> But it's not technically steady because the human body is not perfect. We're not machines. If it was absolutely 100% steady, it would sound like a robot. It wouldn't sound natural. That's why, again, we can compare recordings. And if it lines up exactly, we know that it's the exact same recording. So if something is live and then we compare it to another live recording and everything lines up, one of those or both of those recordings have been lip synced because human beings can't do it exactly the same. Some will win, some will lose. Some are born to sing the blues. Well, the movie never... Oh, listen to that. Right here, up on this high C sharp. And then what he does now is he's got a little more energy in that first harmonic. Because it's an uval, uvals tend to do that. They bring down the upper frequencies. And people tend to uh, lip on them. But Steve's so good, listen. It sounds just, there's no change in his voice. Never it's just a really it nice warm sound. So look how he's doing Boulevard. So that is absolutely wonderful. He's got a very strong first harmonic, but look at the energy in the upper harmonics. So it's got some bite. 
searching in the night. Street lights, people, let them just find emotion, hiding somewhere in the night. And you can tell this is this night is different from the first one, but he's still really in that belt configuration. Yeah. And then, because he's giving it a little bit of an emotional push, I'll show you, let's move the spectrogram. You can see the pitch right here. It drops ever so slightly. Just a little bit. Yeah. And that's just him letting go of the note, that big note. And then the reverb carries it on. So in isolation, it sounds like it goes out a little bit. But in the song, it, it doesn't matter. It's fantastic because it has the intensity. It has the emotion. And then we get him on the chorus. No, stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. Street light. Yeah, I'll bring back in the spectrogram. Again, that's more of a bell. Don't stop believing. Hold on. Now here, on these big notes, look where the energy is. Up on the third harmonic. That's more of a mix. Hold on. And then he belts parts of it. He moves in and out between a mixy sound, a belty sound. Street lights. More of a belt. Don't stop believing. Oh, no, Look at that. Those high C sharps. It's just wonderful. And then it fades out. So I hope this was helpful to visualize and get a little bit of Steve's resonance strategies. Um, just such a fantastic singer, such a great vocal, masterful in his technique, masterful in how he uses resonance and vowels. Hey, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you want to learn more of this voice science and singing stuff, check out my podcast, The Intelligent Vocalist. We'll talk soon.